the Icelandic and Chinese governments are planning to build another aluminum smelter on a mountain. This has led a 50-year-old environmental activist named Halla, who is a conductor and choir musician, to declare war against it on her own. Halla is preparing her arrows beneath the power transmission line. She has attached a wire to her arrow and intends to sabotage the country's power line. She succeeded in cutting the power, causing the electricity in the aluminium factory to go off and making the workers panic. Near the power line tower, a Spanish-speaking tourist noticed a power line explosion. He was then accused of cutting the power line and was arrested by the police. After carrying out the sabotage, Halla escaped by running through the mountains. When Halla began to feel tired, she decided to lie face down on the ground and rest. Suddenly, she heard the sound of a helicopter approaching. Reacting quickly, she got up and ran, finding shelter behind a cluster of rocks. As Halla continued her run, she encountered a local farmer and sought his assistance. She confessed that she was the one who had cut the power lines. The farmer eventually realized that the power outage, which had occurred for the fifth time, was indeed Halla's doing. After knowing Halla's name, the farmer surprisingly recognized her father and willingly agreed to help her. After the police interrogated him, he urged Halla to leave because it was not a safe place. He then provided Halla with a car to facilitate her escape. Before letting Halla leave, he revealed to her the connection between his family and her father suggesting that they might be cousins. In the news report, it was stated that the power line outages were acts of a criminal organization. Hal arrived at her choir studio and discovered that her students was also watching the news. Unfazed, she proceeded to start the class immediately. Once the class was over, one of her students, Baldwin who was actually a government worker and her partner in crime, followed Hal to a room. Before they spoke, they placed their phones in the freezer to avoid being traced. Baldwin told Halla to stop because the government had plans to acquire satellites and body temperature cameras, and they would not cease their efforts until they discovered the person responsible for all the sabotage. However, Halla refused to back down and insisted on continuing her plan to bring down the power lines until the deal was terminated. In the next scene, Halla was enjoying riding her bike on the street and taking in the sights of her lovely town. When she opened her door, she heard the phone ringing. She hastily collected the letters scattered on her floor unaware that she had left one behind. Halla picked up the phone, but there was no response. In her house, she placed her cell phone on the refrigerator and proceeded to watch the news. The news reported that the government was still actively pursuing the criminal organization responsible for the power line sabotage, and the deal with the Chinese government had been delayed. Additionally, the incident was having a negative impact on investor confidence in the Icelandic government, discouraging further investments. Suddenly, Halla's phone started ringing and she received the news that her application letter to adopt a child had finally been accepted after four years. She was informed that there was a child waiting for her to adopt in Ukraine. Halla was taken aback by the news and found herself unsure of how to react. Halla entered a room where a crib and other baby equipment had been prepared long ago. The next day, Halla was in the child adoption office, where she was given a complete set of documents regarding the child she was going to adopt. The child had tragically lost her parents in a war and had no other family. The office lady urged Halla to make a decision soon, even though Halla wasn't fully prepared as it had been a long time since she initially applied. Halla opened the envelope, and a picture of a four-year-old girl holding a flower fell out. She looked at the picture for a moment, taking in the innocence captured in the image. In the police office, the tourist who had been previously arrested was finally released, and he resumed his journey. Halla went to the yoga studio to meet her twin sister, Asa, who was a yoga teacher. She excitedly informed her sister that she had finally been approved to adopt a child. Asa had news of her own to share with Hala, she would be joining a guru's class in India for two years. Before her sister's departure, Hala asked her to sign some papers, designating her as the backup custodian. Hala printed a larger picture of her future adopted child and placed it on the wall. A different newspaper with a distinct headline about the power line case was seen. Hala proceeded to cut out words from the newspaper to create a leaflet for her declaration but she soon had a better idea. She went to an antique shop and examined an old typewriter machine. Then, she turned on an alarm clock. When the shopkeeper lady approached to turn off the alarm, Halla swiftly left the shop with the typewriter machine hidden in her bag. Using gloves, Halla began typing her declaration letter. While reviewing her letter, she accidentally swiped her mouth and touched the paper, realizing that it would leave traces of her DNA on it. She continued writing the letter, but this time she wore a mask to cover her mouth. Halla sneaks into an office to photocopy her declaration letter. She then enters another building and goes up to the roof. She throws copies of her letter into the air. People collected the letter and started reading it. Some of them took selfies with it, and some posted it on Twitter, 
making it become trending. Baldwin is shocked that it's all over the internet. He then goes to tell the Prime Minister because the President is currently giving a tour of the new industrial location to representatives from the Chinese government. The Prime Minister and other staff members stay away from the President, while some of the staff start reading the letter from Halla. In the letter, Halla states that these industrial activities pose the biggest threat to the Earth causing atmospheric warming. She emphasizes that it needs to be stopped immediately before it's too late, and only this generation can make a difference. Haller also reveals her alias as the Mountain Woman. The Prime Minister appears frustrated until one of the staff members has an idea on how to bury this news. After finishing the choir class, Halla tells her students that she wants to make a confession. This makes Baldwin look nervous. Fortunately, Halla's confession is about her adopting a child. Despite their summer choir concert being suspended, this news makes her students happy, and they congratulate Halla. In a room, Baldwin tells Halla that America and Israel are taking part in the investigation of the letter. He also mentions that the government will find a way to twist the issue, and they have initiated a mole investigation, which makes Baldwin afraid of being caught, as well as Halla. While riding her bike, Halla starts to worry about being followed. As she passes by the shops, she hears the news confirming that the government has indeed twisted the issues. Various news outlets mention absurd proposals such as wage cuts, claiming that hydraulic energy is highly ecological. When Halla arrives home, she watches the news and realizes that the government has successfully twisted the issues. The Prime Minister announces that there will be no way to dismantle a smelter, and the negotiations with China will continue. After watching the news, Halla prepared her equipment and she proceeded to the road administration storage to steal a big amount of Semtex. The following day, she purchased several plants and a sack of chicken manure. Halla then placed the Semtex inside the chicken manure. The police became aware of the stolen Semtex and issued a warning, suspecting the possibility of another act of sabotage. Halla's car was stopped by the police, but she managed to deceive them because of the strong smell of chicken manure emanating from her car trunk. The farmer came out of his garage because his dog wouldn't stop barking and spotted his car, which he had let Hal a bar earlier. He could see Hal in the distance, walking up in the mountains. Just then, the tourist on the bike popped up out of nowhere and also caught sight of Hal. Shortly after, he noticed a drone flying in the sky. Hal set up a camp and started exercising, then lay face down on the grass. At night, a drone with a body temperature camera detected a heat signature inside a tent. The police arrived to raid the tent, only to find out that the person inside was not Halla, but the tourist. Halla woke up peacefully in the morning and continued her journey towards the power line. Upon arrival, she began cutting the wires of the power line pylons. In the process, she accidentally cut her hand, causing it to bleed. Halla continued by placing the Semtex on a power line pylon, then blew it up, causing the pylon to collapse. A drone showed up and detected Halla's heat signature. Halla quickly grabbed her bow and arrow from her bag, wearing a Nelson Mandela mask. With precise aim, she shot down the drone, destroying it. Suddenly, she heard a helicopter approaching and quickly hit under a rock, covering herself with an aluminum blanket. The helicopter continued to pursue, detecting a heat signature. But to their disappointment, it turned out to be a sheep. Halla ingeniously used the dead sheep to deceive the police as well. As the day grew darker, Halla grew tired and that's when the farmer found her. He hid Halla in the truck beneath the sheep, successfully evading the police during their checks. The farmer took Halla to a small lake, where she could relax her body for a while. Afterward, the farmer drove Halla to her home. The radio announced that the innocent tourist had once again been released by the police. Back at the power line, two forensics experts discovered blood on the soil and collected a DNA sample. Halla's sister arrived at Halla's house to bring clothing for her child. She was surprised to see the farmer there, and the farmer, in turn, was surprised to see Halla's twin sister. The farmer then accompanied Halla to the airport, as she was ready to depart for Ukraine. Halla appeared nervous as her passport was being checked. Fortunately, everything seemed to be going smoothly until the police decided to take DNA samples from the passengers. Halla looked worried, and suddenly, a passenger shouted to the police that the mountain woman had been caught. Halla took a look at the video and realized that it was her twin sister who had been captured. Halla took a taxi and headed back from the airport. As the taxi driver turned on the radio and mentioned Halla's description, he became suspicious. Halla asked the taxi driver to pull over, claiming she wanted to throw up. She quickly ran to a side road where the tourist suddenly appeared once again. Halla knew that the taxi driver would call the police, so she buried the picture of her adopted child. The police arrived and once again captured the tourist, while Halla walked toward the police and surrendered. In the power line area. We can see the farmer and his dog. Halla's sister come to visit and discusses with Halla the necessity of going to Ukraine to meet her child. Halla appears confused, and suddenly, the power goes off, 
Thanks to the farmer. In a rush, Hala's sister gives her clothing, and they switch their identities. Miraculously, the police don't notice the switch, and Hala successfully escapes. Hala finally made it to Ukraine and met her adopted child. While on a bus heading to their new home, they encountered a flooded area, forcing the passengers to walk through the water. It appears that Hala will be facing another environmental issue in Ukraine.